Should I put a red lip on while I'm wearing orange? <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Holes. Holes is a 2003 theatrical release. It's directed by Andrew Davis, cinematography by Stephen St. John, editing by Thomas J. Nordberg and Jeffrey Wolf, music by Joel McNeely, and it's written by Louis Sakar, Louis Sakar, who also wrote the book. The film is obviously based on the book and I'm not going to do a book comparison purely because if you read this book summary, it is verbatim a summary of the movie. Louis Louis did such a good job of adapting his own novel into a movie. They are the same when you read a synopsis. The film stars Shia LaBeouf as Stanley, Cleo Thomas as Zero, Sigourney Weaver as the Warden, John Voight as Mr. Sir, Tim Blake Nelson as Mr. or Dr. Podansky, Byron Cotton as Armpit, Brendan Jefferson as X-Ray, Miguel Castro as Magnet, um, Max Cash as Zigzag, Patricia Arquette as Kissing Kate Barlow, and Dulé Hill as Sam. It was filmed in California. Shia LaBeouf would often finish filming on Even Stevens and then just go straight to filming scenes for this, which is crazy. Temperatures in the holes would reach 150 degrees, so um, every actor had to go through special stunt guide training in order to deal with being in the holes. There were also four phases to each hole and they had different depths and all that for different continuity, different scenes, etc. They used bearded dragons for all the yellow spotted lizards. Um, Dig It, an iconic song that comes from this movie, played on the Disney Channel all the time. We still love it. I think everyone in the world my age could do A-R-M-P to the T. What is that? You smelling dog? That's me. Uh, because it just played over and over and it still slaps. It's still a great song. The movie had a $20 million budget, made $71.4 million in the box office, which isn't too bad. Has a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. People thought it was faithful to the source material, that it was uh, intelligent and funny and great for a family. I'm genuinely so impressed by this from a cohesive vision standpoint, incredible. From a performance standpoint, amazing. He got fantastic performances out of every actor in this movie. And from a technical standpoint, so good. The cinematography was really immersive, which you know I love. There was lots of movement, lots of natural feeling, observational shots, everything felt so appropriate and so effective to tell the story. The best scene, in my opinion, cinematography speaking, with both movement, shot choices, and lighting specific, is the scene where they burn the school and kill Sam. That scene was peak cinematography, was so well done. Every lighting choice, every movement choice, it all came together in that scene for the cinematography. I have a couple things I want to say about the edit. First of all, this movie is like two hours long. I think it's just shy of two hours, which is a longer movie than what we've been watching recently. I was actually kind of surprised at how long this movie was. I didn't realize that it was a close to two hour film. That means nothing. This movie is paced perfectly. Nothing is boring. Nothing is useless. Everything is important. Everything tells the story effectively. It is also seamlessly told with three different storylines happening. With the Yelnate's history curse happening, with the Kiss and Kate Barlow story happening, and with the Stanley Yelnate's story happening. Everything is seamless and so well crossed over and edited through and well, well paced. The reveal of the warden was cinematography and editing truly came together in the reveal of the warden. The, you might want to come out here and see this, all the way, like the car speeding down, the boots on the ground, rolling up to reveal that 
what I assume everyone was surprised to find out the warden was a woman. I think that's supposed to be like the big surprise. But at the end of the day, it's still a great reveal of this person that's in power that we've only heard of and haven't seen yet, period. Such a great reveal of Sigourney Weaver. I know I've already mentioned Dig It and that it's an iconic song. So true. I still listen to that song. Still a bop. Okay. You've got to go dig those holes. Come on. So good. Now, the movie also has a couple other songs that have words in them. I think the one I can think of the most is when he's riding the bus into Camp Green Lake. And that song didn't feel misplaced and didn't feel inappropriate for the vibe of the movie. So compared to the last few movies where I've complained, like Winnie the Pooh or Ghosts of the Abyss, where I've complained about the songs they've chosen that have words that just don't vibe with what's happening or the story, the couple of songs in this movie that have words fit the vibe entirely, make total sense, and are truly part of that cohesive vision that Andrew accomplished. I know I already mentioned that this is a fantastic adaptation and it's semi not surprising because the author is the one that adapted it for the screen. However, it is also a little surprising because a lot of times I feel like authors have all this room in a book to explain things or do things. And so translating it into a script, sometimes they try to tell us with dialogue instead of show us. And so much of this movie is showing and not telling, especially toward the beginning. Stanley has so little dialogue in the front half of this movie that I was genuinely like, wow, I'm so impressed by how little dialogue he has for such a long period of time in the beginning of this movie that everything else is like visually told, other characters are speaking. It's just so like perfectly shown and not told, which is fantastic in a movie because obviously you want to show as much as you can and not tell. We aren't here for expository dialogue unless it's absolutely necessary. I also, I know I just touched on, it's seamlessly reverts between Stanley and then the Elia and Stanley and the Kiss and Kate Barlow story. It, but with the Kiss and Kate Barlow story, this love story between Kate and Sam is unparalleled. It is so easy to do such a simple love story that captivates you without making it like, you know, there, we, we've had movies where I'm like, oh my God, I don't care. It's an unneeded love story. It's an unneeded love story. But somehow Kate and Sam, I'm like, oh, I would die for them. They're so cute. Their chemistry jumps off the scene, which is a different discussion, but it's so well written. I have nothing but amazing things to say about it. I think we can all agree that this cast is stacked, okay? Absolutely stacked. Sigourney Weaver, John Voight, Dulé Hill, Patricia Arquette, like Shia LaBeouf. The list goes on. There's so many top tier actors in this movie, which brings it to another level. I also want to talk about chemistry here for a minute. The chemistry between Patricia and Dulé is so, so palpable. It is jumping off the screen. Their chemistry is amazing. When he says, I can fix that all the time, which we know, but the, the time she's crying and he's like, I can fix that. And the kiss, you're like at the edge of your seat. You're just like, oh my God, yes. Like, I want this for them. And then Patricia Arquette, the last time she says Sam, when he gets killed in the boat, she's like, Sam is heart shattering. Her performance is incredible. And then obviously Shia LaBeouf, typical, is amazing as center stage. He jumps off the screen, but his chemistry with Cleo Thomas is also so good. Their chemistry is great. It doesn't, you don't have to have like just romantic chemistry. You can have really great friend chemistry jumping off the screen. And I think they had really great chemistry jumping off the screen. I think everybody just melded and melded and fit, welded, melded and fit so well together. First of all, 18 months for a first offending teenager who stole some donated shoes? Whoa, I feel like that's a little bit extreme maybe, but I, I, maybe I feel that way because I know that Stanley was innocent, but still like dang. And then the scene where, you know, the boys have all been really nasty 
to Stanley, but then some other dude tries to like beat on Stanley and they all come to his aid and then all of a sudden he's caveman and all of a sudden he's one of the group is very, that whole shift is so sweet. It's so nice. It's like a little bit of a relief. And then when Hector and Stanley start bonding and doing the teaching to read, that's so sweet. And I love like Hector starts opening up and kind of like Stanley, especially because he knows, like he feels guilty because he knows Stanley didn't steal the shoes because he stole the shoes. And then I also really love the relief when Stanley carries Hector up the mountain and gives him the water and then sings the song just because he's like, oh my God, I made it. Like, I'm just gonna sing this family lullaby. And you like, you know that it's about to break the curse because he like did it generations down. And then immediately following that, the dad discovers peaches and onions being, you know, the odorless thing to solve foot odor. And it's just become split or whatever. Like, it's just so relieving. I like, oh, that relief you feel is so good. And then there is an after credits, which I don't think I ever knew. I had no idea that there was an after credit scene. It's called a coda, usually. Um, and it's Zero doing, saying what Madame Zeroni said with the, you will carry me up the mountain and let me drink from the river, you know, um, otherwise you'll have a terrible curse, which was very cute. I love this movie. I've always really liked this movie. I haven't seen it in a while, so I was excited to watch it for this purpose. But watching it for this purpose made me realize how, like, actually good this movie is like it's actually really well made really well told fantastically acted like uh it's a genuinely good movie i'm i don't i don't want to say i'm surprised because i've always liked it but i don't know i was expecting to find like at least quite a few flaws but really like it's entertaining from front to back it's effective storytelling wise it's enrapturing like it's just good it's a good movie uh so that's everything i have for holes my final rating is nine nine holes out of ten our total movie count is our parent death toll and cry count is still the same. If you want to keep up with my movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find out movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. I wore orange just for this video. Uh, buy merch. You can get this merch if you join Patreon. Just saying. There's also a gray one that looks really nice. Uh, and I think black too. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so you do. And don't be the warden, Mr. Sir, Dr. Pendansky, about it. <gasps> I didn't put mascara on. That's what looks so different. Oh my God. I'm an idiot. Hang on. Guys, I didn't put mascara on. Oh my God. I'm a mess, y'all. Oh, I got a nice big, oh well. Better than not wearing mascara. Gosh, that was hilarious.